Peace and blessings. I pray that everyone is doing well today. I pray that if you are having a hard day, I pray that you are able to dig deep within um, and count your blessings. And that doesn't take away from the difficulty. It just means that when we count our blessings, things are a lot better, a lot brighter. Uh, because I definitely want us to have a good day. I want us to have a great day. Uh, and it's within us to do. Uh, I am Khalid. This is Lessons Learned. Uh, and I appreciate you all joining me again for another installation um, about my life, about my prison time, my incarceration. And uh, again, I, I genuinely appreciate you all. This, it means a lot to me when I read your comments, uh, your questions, your encouragement, your support. It means the world to me because I truly want this to reach as many people as possible, hoping that it may touch someone. I don't care what age, and it doesn't have to always have to be someone that's you know living a wild life or a, a younger person it can be an adult that may find a degree of inspiration from what i'm doing i just know that i've been inspired by a lot of people and so hopefully with me being transparent and putting myself out there um this may be inspirational to someone so i thank you all uh with that said if you would hit that like button Hit that notification button uh, and subscribe to my channel because I have a lot to offer and I'm definitely going to bring a whole lot more uh, to the channel. With that said, um, I'm going to try to be brief today. <laughs> I'm going to try to be brief. Uh, it's so much to talk about, you know, not just in my life, but 25 years of prison, 25 years. Uh, that was a long time and I earned it. I deserve that and I deserve more and I deserve worse, in my opinion. Um, and that's just the truth. And I'll touch on that later. But what I want to speak about today is faith, faith, uh, in prison. I've always seen shows and movies, uh, and heard people talk about those that have tried to improve their life in prison. I remember in Living Color had a sketch about a guy named Shabazz who would, uh, use large words and, and, and they wouldn't belong where he put them. Um, and it was funny. I've, I've watched it. I've laughed at it myself uh, until I became the person behind bars trying to read the dictionary, trying to make my letters to people sound and feel mature. And so um, I stopped laughing at sketches like that because I found myself on that side and I would listen to guys. And I remember it was a guy, a homeboy of mine from, from D.C., and he used to, he wasn't good at reading or writing. And so one day he came to me. This is actually within the first year of my uh, incarceration. And I, I'm thankful that my father and my mother, uh, you know, pushed education for a long time. You know, I was sincere about school. I actually enjoyed school. I liked math. I liked reading um, and so forth and so on. So I, I was fairly, you know, literate. Um, so one of my homeboys, he would come and ask different guys, you know, usually from D.C. to help him read or, and write letters. And uh, he got a homeboy of ours, another guy who was uh, one of those ones that read the dictionary without understanding the context of the words. And he brought the letter to me one day. And this is no lie remembered almost clear to this very day. And the letter started off, uh, and it was to a female, uh, Dear Queen. And this is before people were, like today, people are saying queen in, the, uh, in abundance. But this is what he said. This is in 1994. He said, Dear Queen, I pray that this brief epistle, which is another word for a letter, finds you in the greatest of health and spirit, constantly elevating into your greatness. Something like that. And when I read it, I didn't laugh at first. And I looked at like three more lines down. And I'm looking at the words he's using. And I gave it back to him. And he said, what you think? I said, man, is she a scholar? Like, is she like a teacher? That's what I said. Is she a teacher? So he was like, nah. I'm like, man, that's a whole lot of writing, a whole lot of words, you know, for that little bit of writing. I said, man, just scale it down. Look, he, so he gave me the paper and said, man, I'll write it for me. Um, and I don't think I wrote it. Not that time. I, I did write a letter or two for him. Uh, but I'm only saying that to say that he was eager to write a letter that would reflect his maturity or at least give the appearance of maturity. And it's the same with faith. I've seen people and heard people 
talk to other people. We've seen it on TV. Tupac actually said in one of his raps, uh, so you're a Muslim now, no time for females, talking about his homeboy that came back from prison. And so, uh, and people have said that, oh, you don't eat pork now because guys will go to the visit room and then people are buying, you know, sausages or sandwiches with, you know, uh, and pizzas with uh, bacon on it or whatever. And, you know, the guy's like, nah, you know, I'm Muslim or nah, man, I'm studying, you know, Hebrew Israelite, I'm more science or nah, I'm just uh, a Christian, but I don't, you know, want to eat pork anymore. And, you know, our people will mock us, you know, our people, not mine, but, uh, you know, I'm just talking about collectively, oh, you don't want to eat pork now, or you was raised off of pork, or you don't want to, you know, uh, talk this way, you don't want to act that way. And what people don't understand is, it's not always fear that has guys going to church in prison. And I've seen some run to church. I've seen some run to the nation of Islam. I've seen some run to Orthodox Islam and run to the Moor Science Temple because a lot of these institutions that I mentioned are strong. The church is large, pretty much larger as an organization in the prison system. And you have thorough individuals in church that love church enough to protect those that claim Christianity. And I, I know some guys that are like that, love church, will hold posts for church, will, you know, tell guys, you got to leave out of here with that foolishness. I know, you know, and, and most people know about the Nation of Islam. We uh, uh, militant minded, spiritual, um, and, 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 and we love our people and we love, you know, protecting what we, what we love. And so you'll find guys running to the nation or trying to be a part of the nation really just because they know that the brotherhood will protect you. We help you out. Same thing with, you know, the, or the Orthodox, uh, Islamic community. They'll do the same. You have brothers among them that they will love you for the sake of Allah and dislike you for the sake of Allah. So when you say, I'm Muslim, I'm a part of this community, this is my Ummah, you can gamble, and I've seen it, and lose in old brothers, man, hundreds of dollars, and the brothers who are loyal to Islam and their understanding, they will defend the brother that's wrong. And he knows that, and that's why he joined. More often than not, and, and, and God knows the heart. However, my point is, People go to God often when tragedy strikes us, myself included. I was born in the nation, um, raised with the tenants of the nation. Most people that I know were born Christian. Grandmothers took them to church, mothers took them to church, and yet we committed crimes and came to prison. And a lot of us during that time were able to sit down and ask ourselves, what do we want to do with our lives? And that doesn't always happen in the first year, the second year, the third or the fourth year, honestly, because you have distraction. You have homeboys that want you to hang with them. You have that I'm still who I was when I left the street mentality. So you're still fighting. You're still gambling. You're still arguing. You're still playing ball. Like that's the you know only thing to do. So you're still engaged in a lot of the things that you're familiar with, that you're comfortable with. However, there will come a time, and, had, and most of the guys I know, it, that time hit us. Sometimes we were on lock for months on end um, when the whole prison was shut down. And you're forced to sit there and think with no distraction except for your roommate. And you ask yourself the questions that you know we should ask ourselves in life. What do I want to be? Who do I want to be? Who do I love? Who's worth my time? Who's worth my attention? How do I want to live my life? These are questions that any sane person asks themselves. And so a lot of time we tap into where, where we find our strength. And that's the spirit. That's the most high, honestly. Everything else fails. People will come and go in life, whether in, you know, in prison uh, or on the street. People are going to come and they mean well, but they're going to live their life. And that's all right. We came and went. So that happens. But the only constant in life besides death is God, the only constant. And so I know that people have minimized people's faith in prison. I know because you have frauds. Don't get me wrong. You have people that are in there, will go to church, will wear a bow tie, will wear a kufi, will wear a cross, will wear a, 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 a fez, um, you know, will where, where, where profess religion and sound so wonderful on the phone will sound like they're the next scholar uh, out of that group. However, when you see them in the pod, when you see them in the cell, chaos. And none of us are perfect, but you have those guys that know they're just 
absolute hypocrites. Um, they're faking for whatever reason. And so because of that, you have the feeling that a lot of people are faking when they come out. You have people that come out, they mean where they'll go to the mosque, they'll go to church, they'll go to the temple, but they don't hold on. And there's a reason why, not only distractions, but there's other reasons uh, sometimes as well, other factors. Um, sometime in there, you find a brotherhood, man, of guys that'll walk that yard with you, work out with you, sit in a table, Bible study, listen to you talk about your family and give you sound advice. You come home and everybody's living their life. And if you're a stranger, then everybody might not embrace you because they'll be leery. You're an ex-con. One, two, I've seen guys come home from prison that didn't remain consistent. Three, we just don't know you. And so, that can deter a lot of people. And so some people leave uh, or fade from their organizations and their religious groups, but faith is essential. And I would encourage anybody who gets locked up, anybody who uh, is having a trial or a, a, a rough life, turn to the source of life. You know, whatever you call yourself, I deal with everybody. I claim Islam, but I deal with everybody. I love people who are sincere in their desire to do and be good. When I see the Red Cross, those who are sincere and dedicated to helping people, I applaud that. I can't go to Haiti with my bare hands and build a, you know, a house, but other people are. Red, uh, Blue Shield, um, uh, you know, church. I've seen churches every winter, spring, summer, and fall, angel tree helping families out. I've seen Muslims, man, dedicate their lives to just helping people out, putting their lives on the line in the streets, breaking fights up and trying to clean neighborhoods up. I've seen brothers, man, just protect other people's families just because they're part of that organization. So I deal with anybody whose desire is to evolve and strive to do and be better. And that's not to knock those trying because none of us are perfect. But at least if you're on the path to evolving, then that means that we're moving in a similar direction and we can relate just like people that love basketball can relate to other ball players. Just like hustlers relate to hustlers. Those who are striving to be conscious and do good, they can relate to one another. Um, and so faith is important. And I, I say this as well. I've seen guys who were in prison for being monsters, for being savages. Wow. Sell drugs to pregnant women. We'll shoot you for breathing on them. We'll, we'll, hurt you just because you're not from where they from. Bad. I've seen that. Um, have been that, sadly. And, and, and for anybody watching these that know me, that I've harmed, that I've hurt, that I've disrespected in any way, I, I sincerely apologize because it's hard for me to rest some nights with a lot of the thoughts that course through my mind because I made a lot of mistakes. And so I apologize. And that's from me. And later on, I'll be a bit more personal um, in that. But I force myself to change. I force myself to become more spiritual, not religious, though I did, you know, do the religious, the rituals in the religion that I'm a part of. However, I became more spiritual. And in that, that's when the weight of your crime, that's when the weight of your mistakes hit you. And I'll speak about that next week. But you don't really grow until you hold on to God, until you really try to clean yourself, then you realize how dirty you are, how dirty you were. And that's when you start to regret. And that's when you start to find yourself and your direction, your aim and your purpose. But for now, know that if there are those who've come home and they're striving to be religious, push them in that direction because that's what got them through. Push them to do and be better. Push them to be about what they say they're about. And if you are something, strive just a little harder to do and be about what you say you're about. Because faith, when you have it and you have it in abundance, anybody listening to this that understands this knows it to be true. Faith will see you through the darkest night, the hardest storm. That I know for a fact, because there were many nights, man, where you know, some people just cried themselves to sleep. I've seen guys go to the hold. I've seen guys like literally go crazy in prison because they could not handle the weight of the time. They could not handle the loss of their mother, the loss of their child, the loss of their family, the loss of their freedom. They couldn't handle it. They did not anticipate everything that came along with it. And the only thing that kept some guys afloat was faith. And so I applaud guys so sincere and their dedication to a faithful life, a faithful way of life. Um, 
And many of us now benefit from guys who evolved in there. So let us be faithful. Let us strive to dig a little deeper. Um, because like I say, when all else fails, God is a constant. Whatever you call him, the most high, the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah, Yahweh, Jehovah. He is the one that created the universe and everything in it. He is the only constant, the source of life. And if you hold on to him, and as best you can, the tenets that he gave us, nothing can stop us from doing and being better. And though we're not perfect, and we're not going to be perfect tomorrow, we're not going to be perfect next week or next month, next year, but if we're striving, it'll go a long way. Again, I thank you all for watching this. I thank you all for uh, joining me on this journey. If you have any questions, you can send them to me, type them to me. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, Again, I appreciate you all. Continue to strive, continue to evolve, and continue to help those and love those you rock with and that you care for. And let us just strive to do and be better to one another. Thank you.